Arjuna Sakaya Chaksu Unnavitam Yenatas, my Sri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapitam Yenabutale Swam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Pandeham Shivaroshi Utapa de Kamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagujatam Sahaganath Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahaganath Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Sha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namas today Ma Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Pinyamne Namaste Sarasnapi Deve, Kaulavani Pacharine Nirvishri Sasunyavari Pasyatya Deva Sitarane. Up the Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Suri, Vikabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye, Vancha Kalpa Tarubhishya, Kripa Sindhu, Vaevacha, Patitanam, Bhavane Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo, Mahon Maha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasavi Gaur, Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <coughs> So after the last almost two weeks, yeah, practically two weeks of Ram Kata, we'll break from there and honor today's festival day. Uh, today also is the appearance day of Sri Hanumanji, but we will beg his mercy and speak on the other personalities today as we have spoken on Hanuman for the last week or more. So now we'll move into, there is the, uh, let me see what the calendar says here. It is the uh, appearance of Sri Shamananda Prabhu. It's the appearance of Sri Vamsi Vadananda Thakur. And it's also Sri Malaram Rasayatra, and it's the first day of the month of Vaishaka. Mm -hmm. So I'll begin with uh, speaking about Raj Balaram's return to Vrindavan. As we know from the beautiful past times, the residents of Vrindavan are experiencing mostly a mood of love and separation from Krishna and Balaram. That mood was intensified when Krishna and Balaram left Vrindavan when Akura came with his chariot to take Krishna to, to Mathura to take care of the political affairs there, which Krishna did very efficiently. He uh, killed the harassing demon, Kamsa, who was harassing everyone, and even the persons who were following him, he was harassing. And he was killed by Krishna, and Krishna drug him out from the the uh, viewing stand after he defeated these two wrestlers, who Krishna de uh, defeated Mustika and Balaram Chamara. After killing both of them, he went immediately and grabbed Kamsa and pulled him out of the diocese onto the ground and started to punch him until he was finished. <laughs> you can imagine the power of Krishna has the supreme, the supreme power of existence within him. 
So being punched by Balaram, he, I mean by Krishna, he was, he must have been, felt like mountains were falling upon him. And so in no time he was dead and then Krishna grabbed him by the hair and drug him around the wrestling arena. Just, Krishna never did that so much with other demons, he would just kill them. But because her, uh, Kamsa was such a thorn in the side of so many people, he had arranged so many killings of children, harassing his mother, Vasudev and Devaki, his father, and sending one demon after another into Vrindavan, causing, you know, anxiety to the residents of Vrindavan. But Krishna made good note of him to make, to let everyone know that he was not at all pleased <laughs> with Kamsa. Other demons, he just killed them because they were demons and they attacked. But Kamsa was such a, such a powerful and such an evil person that he didn't care. He just killed people wholesale, not caring for anyone. And so Krishna wanted to make a point that this particular demon, I'm going to show my anger. And he did. So now Krishna had been gone and then he established King uh, Pugasena on the throne, who was the, actually was the father of Kamsa, stepfather, I believe, the father. And then Krishna stayed in uh, Mathura at the request of the residents of Mathura for a long time. And then for so many months and actually years, he couldn't return to Vrindavan because one demon after another was still on the planet. And we know Krishna appears in this world, pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam, <coughs> to destroy the demoniac personalities and to reestablish righteousness through religious principles. And so this prevented Krishna from returning to Vrindavan. But the anxiety, the loving anxiety of the residents of Vrindavan was only increasing. Mm -hmm. They were feeling so much separation from Krishna. At one point, Balaram decided to pacify and show his love and concern for the residents of Vrindavan. So he actually left Dwarka. Krishna was in Dwarka, and they both were. And he came to visit Vrindavan. Uh, this was in this time of the year. It was two months, the months of Chaitra and Vaishaka, which is March, April, April, May. And so we are right in the middle of Vaishaka right now. So this is considered to be one of the more uh, holy times of the year. <laughs> Many festivals. So feeling anxious in the separation from the residents of Vrindavan, Lord Balaram alone came and arrived in Vrindavan. When the inhabitants of Vrindavan saw Balaram, they all gathered around him to welcome him. At that time, there were many years later, so many of the young gopis were now grown up. Many of the young cowherd boys were now also family men, family people. And so her time had really uh, passed for many, many decades actually, and Balaram returned. And then it says he embraced all of them in loving affection. Uh, and then he also offered respects to Nanda and Yasoda, who upon seeing them, offered their blessings unto him and uh, were crying in happiness seeing Lord Balaram appear. In fact, they greeted him so lovingly 
that they placed him on their lap and treated them, him like a loving little child, although he was a grown up person. <laughs> so this was a, really a loving exchange that went on for many hours, actually. Balaram greeted all the residents of Vrindavan. They all came to meet him. He shook hands with a few, with some that were equal in age and friendship. And laughing loudly, they embraced each other. So it was a very heartwarming, joyous occasion of Balaram's returning to Vrindavan. And then at one point, the young go gopis, <laughs> when they saw Balaram, they uh, came to Balaram and they said, Balaram, uh, my dear Balaram, are friends like Vasudeva and others in the family doing well? Now you and Krishna are grown up and are married and have your own children. In the happiness of married life, do you sometime, sometimes remember your poor mother and father? Mamanda and Mananda and Yasoda. It's good news that Kamsa and many of the other demons have been killed by you. And we are we are feeling also good news that you have come. And then Jarasandha also. So they mentioned many demons. Then they, they glanced over at Balaram in a loving way. And they said, Balaram. Because they specifically asked Balaram how Krishna was doing. Is he enjoying nicely in the, with the ladies of Dwarka? Does he sometimes remember his mother and father? Does, does, he, does he remember Vrindavan? Does he have any plans to come and see his parents? Krishna might have forgotten, forgotten all of us, but we have not forgotten him. In fact, we are spending all our time making garlands and offering the garlands that we make to him. And so we also pray that he will come and accept our garlands. And when they were start, started to speak like that, they became overwhelmed in emotions and started to cry. They said, we have given up everything for the friendship of Krishna. And even in that great distress, it says that one cannot give up connections with one's mothers, fathers, sisters, relatives, friends. We have left all of that simply for Krishna. But then all of a sudden, Krishna renounced us. After we gave up every, everyone and everyone for him and he left us. He has broken the relationship with us, but we cannot forget him. He's away in a foreign country, but he is so clever. He speaks with so many nice words. And simply because we are innocent cowherd girls who live in the village, we believe everything he says. But he's living with the ladies in Dwarka who are very intelligent and very sophisticated. I'm sure they are not fooled by his very charming words. <laughs> So in this way, the, 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 the gopis were lamenting their feelings of separation. They were exhibiting it to Lord Balaram. And then this went on and on and on. Then our gopis said, my dear friends, what is the use of talking about Krishna? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we could be passing our time speaking about so many other subjects. If cruel Krishna that it can live without him, we can also live with Krishna, without Krishna. He's passing his days happily without us. But and then she said, but we cannot pay it past our days happily without him. As the, Dogo, the gopis were continuing to express their loving related feelings towards Krishna, the intensification of their love became more and more, and they started to only cry, thinking about Krishna. But Balaram had come, and he knew that the residents of Vrindavan were suffering tremendously without the presence of Krishna. And finally, he decided to stay for two months 
And during those two months, with his own set of gopis, who were younger gopis, Balaram performed the Rasa Lila dance for two months during the time he stayed there. And he gave all the residents of Vrindavan so much pleasure and so much happy just by seeing him. They forgot their suffering, they forgot their feelings of separation. Balaram wanted to make them happy in whatever way he could because he knew they had sacrificed everything simply so they could show their love for him and Krishna. One time when they were playing together, uh, the goddess Varuna, Varuni, who is the daughter of Varuna, the god of the ocean, the god of the seas, actually, um, she created this very aromatic liquor, which was also known as the Varuni beverage. And uh, she captivated the whole Vrindavan forest with a beautiful aromatic scent that attracted the minds of everyone, including Lord Balaram. So the gopis along with Balaram started to drink this Varuni beverage, <laughs> which is like a honey liquor, which if you drink too much, you will become drunk, intoxicated. So Balaram, he was drinking a lot <laughs> and his eyes were rolling in this way and that way in a very pleasing attitude. <laughs> he smiled and drops of per perspiration appeared on his face and they were as sweet as the morning dew. In this ecstasy of loving exchanges, Balaram and the the gopis went to the Jamuna. But the Jamuna wasn't in such a resort to enjoy in the Jamuna River. So he asked Mother Jamuna to come. She was thinking, who is this? He's simply intoxicated. So she decided not to come. <laughs> this angered Balaram very much. And Balaram has two weapons, or not two weapons, but two constant companions, which he uses as weapons. One is a plow, which is called Haladar. And uh, well, he's called Haladar, holder of the plow, it's a name for Balaram. And then his uh, club is called Sunanda. He has a club and a plow. So he took out his plowshare and he drove it into the Jamuna River and started pulling the river towards him. Due to the strength of his pulling, the river started to break up into smaller streamlets and go in different directions. And then he threatened the river, you know, if you don't come, I'm gonna divide you into hundreds of scattered streams. When Jamuna heard this, since she realized who he was, she appeared in her personal form and fell at his lotus feet, offering a prayer. You are most powerful, dear Balaram. You are the supreme personality of God. You are pleasing to everyone. I, unfortunately, I forgot your exalted position. Now I, have, I understand and come to my senses. You are so powerful, you, you carry all the planetary systems simply on the hoods of your head as your partial expansion as Sheshanag. You are the sustainer of the entire universe. You are full in all opulences. Because I have forgotten you, I disobeyed your order. Now I have become a great offender. Please know that I am your surrender soul. Please excuse my impudence and please give me your mercy and now release me <laughs> from the grip of your plowshare <laughs> in which Balaram was happy to receive 
the Jamuna's prayer and he took the opportunity along with the gopis and went diving into the river and they swam around. And the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the source of all enjoyment. Whatever enjoyment we can um, think of, uh, th that enjoyment is there within the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is <clears throat> personification of unlimited transcendental pleasure. And he exhibits his pleasure in various ways. And here, as a beautiful boy of Vrindavan, now he's grown up, he's in sporting with many of the gopis in Vrindavan in the waters. Just like a, a he elephant splashes around in the water with a group of she elephants. After he took his bath, Jamuna wanted to offer more service, so she provided nice, beautiful blue garments, along with a beautiful, beautiful necklace of um, golden necklace. It actually was made a necklace made of gold. And she offered to Balaram. Balaram dressed himself nicely in these garments. And it says that he looked like King Indra, the king of heaven. <laughs> Nice and so in the presence of the residents of Vrindavan and particularly with his own group of gopis, Balaram performed Rasa Lila for two months during this time period and just to give pleasure to the residents of Vrindavan. So this is an, a nice understanding. The Lord wants to please his devotee the devotee wants to please the Lord. It's, it goes on sometimes as a competition. Who can do the most to please the other person? Of course, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is perfect, powerful, and complete. So in any competition on any level, he always outdoes his competitor. So when he wants to give pleasure to his devotees, his devotees experience great happiness, pleasure, satisfaction, and their love for the Lord increases. And when they're, as their love for the Lord increases, their service to the Lord increases more. The devotee thinks, hmm, I can serve, I'm serving in this so many ways. Let me think of what other way I can serve. How else can I serve? This uh, desire to want to serve more, the desire to want to serve in an even better way than we're serving now with more devotion, with more expertise is a feature of the love that comes by way of the mercy of the Lord. And the devotee remains very happy, simply thinking of how to serve the Lord. The non-devotees, they're always thinking of how to serve themselves. Sometimes, of course, they think of how to serve people around them, but their motivation is self-centeredness, whereas they're looking for some some uh, remunerations, reciprocation for whatever they do. But the devotee's happiness is when the Lord is pleased. And that is the principle of bhakti. Bhakti means when you serve the Lord and the Lord is pleased by your service, you are completely satisfied. We don't even look for anything else we're happy with simply by serving the Lord. Bhakti goes right to the heart. It awakens that natural propensity to serve and it gives complete satisfaction. But that satisfaction turns into a kind of dissatisfaction because a devotee is not satisfied simply by doing what they're doing. They want to do more. So there's a kind of dissatisfaction that awakens towards increasing. Let me do more, both qualitatively and quantitatively. 
or whatever way I can, just to somehow or other please the Lord. So this is Bhakti, and you see how Balram, who was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he gave such pleasure, such happiness for two months. Of course, after those two months, he had to leave. And the time of his departure was very lamentable. They were feeling that they had lost their lives when Balaram was leaving. But he had to rejoin Krishna in Dwarka and continue with their mission of killing the demons. Krishna was always thinking, when can I go back to Vrindavan? I long to be with my devotees, especially my mother Yasoda and Radharani. But Krishna knew that he came for this mission to rid the world of demons. And every time he killed one demon, there was always another one coming up somewhere. So Krishna was always arranging. Finally, at one point, he finished all the major demons and the smaller ones scattered in different directions like that. So, of course, Krishna can come, doesn't have to come to kill demons, but sometimes he does, but he comes really to give pleasure to his devotees. Like that. And because the devotees are always harassed by the demons, the Lord takes the time to remove demons from the world. When the devotees become truly harassed, if there's some disturbances caused by the demons, and even today the demons are trying to cause disturbances in so many ways, but the devotees, they just tolerate it. But if it becomes too, too much and the devotees are harassed beyond, and there's some of them are losing their lives because of the demons, then Krishna will do something. He protects his devotees and he also arranges for the demons to be destroyed. Of course, now we have the full protection of the Lord through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite Sarva Jagat Nistara. The scriptures enjoin that here is the shelter of all shelters, the complete shelter, which allows us to find everything in one place, Krishna's holy name. With faith, and with frequency, we chant the holy names of the Lord and therefore find complete satisfaction and happiness, completely oblivious to the difficulties that the material world has going on all around us. The devotees are, it's like being in a rainstorm, but having enough uh, clothes, rain clothes, umbrellas and whatever to protect yourself and not even getting one drop of wetness. That is the power of the Krishna's holy name. Okay, so this is a little bit about Balaram's Rasa Yatra, um, which is really sweet. And if you go to chapter number 30 in Krishna book, you can read this nice account of Balaram appearing in the in the in Vrindavan. Okay, so I'll stop there. Tomorrow, maybe we'll go into more of the personalities such as Vamsi, Vadananda Thakur, and Shamananda Pandit. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, absolutely like uh, good class uh, on Bal Lord Balram and his glory. And uh, really like uh, looking for <laughs> this class of Shaman and the Prabhu uh, this week. Uh, it's like very, very like, I don't know, like very close. I like his pastimes gives lots of uh, uh, like lots of motivation to me, uh, especially Radharani and also that I think if Guru Maharaj, can I ask one thing that is he same Shamananda Prabhu 
who was dukhiya krishna das like the same or so different yeah that's the same dukhi krishna das was initiated by uh, uh ridai chaitanya <laughs> okay uh but he received the name shamananda from radharani that was a special yeah mercy i narrated that you know, i think on his disappearance day which was a yes. few months back i spoke the whole past time uh but now again on his appearance day we'll speak of if you like i will speak tomorrow on shamananda mm -hmm. thank you guru maharaj thank you very much and hari krishna dear devotee uh, if you have any questions or any comments or realization then please do unmute yourself or if you want me to uh, read on your behalf then you can type in chat window hari krishna Hare Krishna, dear devotees. I hope. Um, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri La Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. I'm uh, thinking about this pastime of the Gopi's lamentation of how um, Krishna leaves them and is gone for so long, and how they say we have left everything. We have given up our fathers, our mothers, our husbands, our children, and everything. and uh, all we wanted was to be with you please you see you happy make garlands for you feed you nice food stuffs and now suddenly you're gone without caring for us you've just suddenly left us and left us in this ocean of lamentation so how is it that krishna can bear to do that uh you have to you have to take it to as as it plays itself out the mood of loving krishna is of two kind loving in separation and loving in meeting the intensification of the loving emotion is enhanced in the mood of separation as a devotee thinks of krishna in so many ways laments the the absence of krishna praise to krishna the intensity of that mood as it develops becomes very strong where the devotee can actually feel the presence of krishna within their heart but in the on the surface if we just scratch the surface of this mood of leptis of uh, separation it doesn't really take us very far we always think about the mood of meeting but krishna does that in order to increase the loving mood because it's higher more intense more satisfying in the mood of separation mm -hmm. and then when meeting comes you see sometimes you know i used to tra i would travel in airports and then uh, i'd be getting off the plane along with the other passengers and coming into the into the terminal areas and then we come to the area where people were waiting for their loved ones their friends or and then you would sometimes see how people would meet and they and there would be such an excitement happiness and embracing and so much that 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 meeting 
after being away from each other, just sparks in this emotional mood. So that emotion is building up in the mood of separation. And then upon a meeting, it explodes into a higher, a higher form of satisfaction. But then again, you see, after the meeting is there and then some time goes on, then things go back to a more normal way, you might say. And the love again starts to take a back seat and things go on again. But then when separation comes, it increases that mood again. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's teaching that mood of separation. Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravishaitam shunyaitam jagat sarvam govinda virahena me. In this particular prayer, he exhibits that mood. Uh, o son of Maharaj, no, O Govinda, feeling your separation, I'm considering a moment to be 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain, and I'm feeling all vacant in the world in your absence. As long as we are holding on to so many material things and find, trying to find satisfaction in those things, we can't really go into the mood of loving separation with Krishna. When you look around and you see there's nothing but Krishna and everything else you have is simply there for you to use, but it will not give you any happiness and satisfaction. Then you can begin to um, feel that mood of separation from Krishna. Because we take shelter of so many material things, looking for satisfaction in these things or in material relationships, we find it very hard. That's why when Krishna, that's why Prabhupada always say, when Krishna wants to favor you, he gives you everything. And when he really wants to favor you, he takes everything away. It's the, the song of the Avanti Brahman in the 11th canto. It's a beautiful exhibition of that. Having had so much and then losing everything and then being, being abandoned by friends, relatives and everyone, he was left alone with nothing. And in that mood, he was seeing Krishna within everything in nature, So the mood of separation is the highest mood of bhakti. So Krishna, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting this, but I will put it on. So Krishna did that to increase the feelings of separation of the gopis and to enhance their loving mood. Was that correct, Guru Maharaj? That, that was one of the many reasons yeah yeah there was other reasons but that was one of them mm -hmm. he does that all the time lord Chaitanya did that with his devotees when he was here he took sannyas and caused a great amount of wailing and lamentation left his mother left his wife same with uh lord ram he mm -hmm. left all of your citizens in Ayodhya. Mm -hmm. Went to the forest. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Anything else? Mm -hmm. so Guru Maharaj, I have one question. Um, see, like when uh, 
like when I'm chanting the holy name, uh, normally like uh, this Vichastikam and all uh, view is that we should feel that separation from Lord, but it goes other way with me. I feel like, okay, I'm chanting Krishna is with me now here. I feel like, so how to develop that mood of separation? Like when not chanting, I feel separation, but while chanting, feel like that he's here. So is this wrong <laughs> mood? Or? Well, no, <laughs> the idea of chanting is to try to bring Krishna to you, but bringing Krishna to you through the process of chanting, there are periods of, of separation. If your chanting is so good, that you have actually reached that stage of feeling the presence of Krishna completely in your chanting, and you're getting special mercy. But sometimes he leaves, even while we're chanting nicely, just to increase that move. Krishna is not different than the holy name, but he can he can move, remove himself and appear in his name and then appear not to be appearing in his name also. So the mood of chanting, as Prabhupada has instructed us, is to cry out like a child who is helpless crying for the presence of the mother. That child knows nothing but the mother, and the crying is the, the desire for the child to be uh, again, in the presence of the mother. So that's our chanting. That's the mood of chanting, calling out for Krishna's presence. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Happy to hear that your chanting is very satisfying. Good. No, mind is still goes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, with in front of you, I cannot say anything wrong, but like trying to, and many times feel like yes, like uh, yes, like Krishna's energy is there, something. So it's very. Satisfying. It can always be. It can always be more. <laughs> yes. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. We still have 15 minutes to go. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, my question is a sort of an embarrassing one <laughs> because you, you spoke about uh, this uh, mood of separation. And I suppose when we are uh, hearing and reading about for example, the, the descriptions of the Lord, um, it should help us to, to be more attracted. However, there are some parts of those, those descriptions which uh, with, a, how to say, in a material sense, uh, we usually don't consider attractive, like those which are about reddish eyes or perspiration. So I don't know how to handle this in myself or what to do about it, this. Just accept it. <laughs> it's what <laughs> it is. When you're, whatever you're reading, you're reading about what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I see, because I mean, in, intellectually, I understand that uh, when it's about the Lord, uh, it, it should be uh, attractive, it's just, uh, I, I usually try to visualize everything and and um, somehow it's it's a bit difficult for me those parts how to uh, how to understand uh, in a proper way. Well, if you read and reread and keep reading and with the try with the, the mood of trying to understand as you're reading, more of the all of more of the knowledge of what's happening, because these, these words are simply describing something that is beyond our sensual uh, purview. They're happening on another level. But the words coming from the pure devotee 
helps us to take us into that mood. So how much we can go into that mood depends on how much we really have faith in what's being said and at the same time, eagerness to understand more. So repetition in, in reading is very uh, helpful in increasing the messages that are being given to us. If we just skim through the pages, we miss a lot. Reading very carefully. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, uh, previously, I, I, my goal were all the time to read a certain number of pages, but uh, later on, I, I understood that it's, uh, it generates some kind of bad mood. Uh, and uh, and now I do it all the time in in minutes. Uh, how, how much I, I read, so it doesn't really important. It's not really important how many pages. So it's uh, it's much better uh, in this sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you feel inspired, you can continue to read. Yes. Hmm. If you you know, the more you read, actually, the more you want to. You know, it kind of forces you to try to understand more. Yeah, it's just sometimes I, I feel that I would like to memorize something, and the more I read, uh, the more I want to to remember. But uh, my brain has limited capacity, and I get frustrated that I I can I cannot remember what I read. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't be frustrated. Just keep <laughs> reading. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. I think you have your problem is you're looking for instant Krishna consciousness and it doesn't work like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it might be, or at least some some kind of results. You can't but, just push a button and expect things to happen. It's a process of of cultivation of the mood of bhakti with the uh, with the focus on learning and understanding the more you the more you apply yourself in a complete way the more you gain from that from that application but don't you know try to understand and you will understand something. There's no question about that. And how much you understand, that's relative to how much you read and how much Krishna wants to reveal himself. But you'll always understand something. There will be some satisfaction in reading about Krishna's pastimes. Anything else? Mm -hmm. So there is no question, Guru Maharaj, on the chat. Okay. So we can uh, conclude here. It's just getting close to the next hour. And tomorrow we will definitely do Shamananda and Bhamsi Ananda both tomorrow's class hopefully thank you guru maharaj thank you very much for this beautiful pastimes thanks devotee for joining this session shila prabhupada ki jai gurudev ki jai anant koti vishnu vrind ki jai shila prabhupada ki jai hare krishna thank you maharaj hare krishna Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Sri Devi. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vishwapavani.
थैंक यू गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा